Welcome back to Bargaining in War. In this lecture, we're going to take a comparative static on the model that we solved for in the previous lecture. Here, we're looking at a situation where A does not know whether B has a low or high valuation of the prize at stake. And more specifically, we're looking at the corner solution, where the low valuation type has a negative war payoff, and the high valuation type has a positive payoff. What we saw under those circumstances is that A's optimal demand is a function of its prior belief Q. Specifically, there exists a critical cut point, which is this messy expression right here, such that if A's prior belief Q that B has a low valuation and therefore is willing to give in to any demand that A makes whatsoever, then A demands the entire prize and risks war against the high valuation type, which will reject and fight a war instead. In contrast, if that prior belief Q is relatively low, then in that situation, A thinks it's relatively likely to be facing a high valuation type, and so it makes some concession to convince the high valuation type to accept, which also induces compliance and acceptance from the low valuation type. So that's a safe demand that both types are accepting and we don't see war. The central question for this lecture is what happens when we change B's cost of war? What happens when we increase costs of war to B? And what we previewed before is that unlike in the interior solution, in this corner solution, this is going to lead to peace more often. So specifically, what that means is that this cut point is going to be shifting to the right so that the safe demand is being made more often under more circumstances than what happens when we keep that cost where it is, when we don't increase that cost. So you can see just by eyeballing what's going on with this fraction, why that might be the case. In the numerator, we have CB, and that's the only place it is. It's not floating around anywhere else. And so if we're increasing that numerator, that's going to increase the cut point. We're going to show that more formally in a moment. But first, let's talk about the intuition for why that should be happening. Remember that this is a unit on piece premiums. Let's think about what the piece premium is here. How much does A need to pay the high valuation type to induce the high valuation type to accept versus how much it needs to pay the low valuation type for the low valuation type to accept? Well, the high type has a war payoff of 1 minus P minus CB over VB prime. So that is how much A needs to pay that high valuation type to get the high valuation type to accept. In contrast, the low valuation type is willing to accept anything whatsoever. So A only needs to pay the low valuation type nothing. We take the difference between these two as the piece premium. And since we're subtracting nothing, this is just equal to the payoff for war for the high valuation type. And you can see, because we're subtracting out CB, as we increase B's cost of war, we are decreasing that piece premium, which gives A less temptation to try to make a risky demand under those circumstances. So now let's formally show that as we increase CB, we are shifting this cut point to the right. So let us compare this cut point here as it normally is, CA over VA plus CB over VB prime divided by 1 minus P plus CA over VA. And if we think that we're shifting the cut point to the right, that means when we increase B, CB, by an epsilon value, that's going to be larger than it was before. So now we just transcribe everything from before, but include a plus epsilon value right there. And the denominator is the same. Okay, well, now all we need to do is show that this statement is true. And this is going to be very quick in comparison to previous attempts to conduct comparative statics. First thing to note is that, well, like always, we want to get rid of fractions if we could. And it's very convenient that the denominator of each of these fractions is identical. Moreover, it's positive because 1 minus p is a positive quantity and the cost for war is a positive quantity. So we don't need to worry about doing any sort of flipping. And so that means we can just immediately reduce our fraction here to CA over VA plus CB over VB prime. 
less than CA over VA plus CB plus epsilon over VB prime. Okay, well, from here, these cancel out. So we get CB over VB prime less than CB over plus epsilon over VB prime. Well, now we can get rid of this fraction because the denominators are the same and VB prime is a positive value. So that's good. That gets us CB less than CB plus epsilon. And then we're just left with epsilon greater than zero, which is true. Excellent. So we have just verified that as we increase CB, when we increase this by epsilon, it shifts the cut point over to the right and A is making the safer demand under a greater set of circumstances. To wrap things up here, I wanna just diagram what's going on in the entire game. So we looked at the interior solution a while back. We looked at one of the corner solutions here. We also haven't really talked about a separate corner solution. So here we've been looking at a situation where the high valuation type has a positive war payoff, but the low valuation type has a negative payoff for fighting. You can think about what happens when you increase the cost of war to a very, very, very large amount, then both types have a negative value for war. And so A can make any demand whatsoever to induce compliance. And so obviously what it's going to demand then is everything, which means the probability of war under that circumstance, regardless of A's belief, is going to be zero. So we can diagram all three of those possibilities into a single graph which is what I'm gonna do right now. So on the x-axis, I'm going to vary the cost of war for B. So this is saying what happens when you increase B's cost of war. And on the y-axis here, we're going to have the probability B has the VB valuation, the low valuation. So what we've seen here, this is just Q. That's a fancy way of saying Q. This is B's cost of war. What we've seen is that, generally speaking, when Q is relatively large, we're going to have risky demands being made. And when Q is relatively small, we're going to have safe demands being made. The question is, what does this change in the cut point look like as we increase CB? Well, turns out, if you remember back to the solution in the interior, as you increase B's cost of war, that is increasing the peace premium, and so A is making the risky demand under a greater set of beliefs. So that looks kind of like this, where it's increasing as you go further and further up in the level of costs. But then eventually, when you increase the costs enough, that low valuation type has a positive war payoff turn into a negative war payoff. And that gets us into the interior, rather the corner solution that we've been exploring in the last two lectures. And so there, we start seeing a decrease in the set of circumstances where A is willing to make the risky demand. And then at some point, what happens is that the high valuation type, because the costs of war are extreme, has the negative war payoff. And so A just demands everything and both types accept. And so the situation where A is making the risky demand levels off and in fact goes away entirely, and it's only making the safe demand. So here, what we have seen is a very complicated relationship between the cost of war and the probability of war. In this model alone, we've seen a counterintuitive situation where increasing the cost of war can increase the probability of war. But even within this model, as you increase that cost enough, you eventually transition into a corner solution and you start seeing a decline in the set of circumstances where A is making that risky demand. And so the likelihood of war is going down. So overall, this is a non-monotonic relationship just in this particular model. But overall, one of the central lessons I want to deliver in this unit is that we need to be very careful in how we are thinking about changing a parameter and then changing the probability of war as a consequence of that. Things might not always end up as obvious as they may seem by intuition, which is telling us of the importance of setting up our assumptions, writing down a model, solving the model, and then taking a comparative static on that model to get the right inference. And being very careful about making broad generalizations about how changing any one parameter may affect the probability of fighting. It may have one implication for one set of assumptions, but under another set of assumptions, it may have a different 
implication. Hope you enjoyed this and hope to see you next time. Take care.